Good morning, my dear students. Today we are going to learn three topics. They are phrase and class, connectors, determiners. So we are going to see these three topics in this session. First, we will take phrase and class. Before that, I'd like to ask you a question. What is phrase and what is class? Yes. Before entering into phrase and class, I'd like to ask yet another question. I hope you will be knowing what is a word and what is a sentence. Let us together make a word and words together makes a sentence that too, that which gives a complete meaning is referred to a sentence. Okay. Here, phrase and class. First, we'll take class. What is the class? A class is a group of words that contains both subject and a predicate. Predicate is nothing, it is a verb. Predicate is nothing, it is a verb. Again, I give the definition of class. A class is a group of words that contains both subject and a predicate or a verb. Or simply we can call it as a simple sentence is a class. A simple sentence is a class. Yes. Class is divided into two. They are independent class and dependent class. What is an independent class and what is the dependent class? Yes. Before getting into independent and dependent class, I'll give some examples for classes. The first sentence, Kalpana wants to buy a phone, but she does not have enough money. You see, but she does not have enough money is the, fr is the class. She is the subject, does not have is a verb. So here we have a subject and a verb. So it is a class. Next one. If you don't study well, you won't pass the exam. Here, you won't pass the exam is an example of class. You, subject, won't pass is the verb. So it satisfies the rule with a subject and a verb. You won't pass the exam. It is a second example for class. The third one, Kevin bought a car which was too expensive. Here, Kevin bought a car is an example of class. Kevin, subject, bought, verb. The fourth example, Sanjay is a talented player, though he is out of form. Sanjay is a talented player, is an example of class. Sanjay, subject, is a talented player, is a talented player, is a verb. So here we see Sanjay, subject, is a talented player, verb. Altogether, it is an example of classes. So we are very clear that class contains a subject and a verb and it can stand alone and it can stand alone. Yes, now we'll move on to the two types of classes. They are independent class and dependent class. What is the independent class? The word itself proves that it can stand independent, independent. Independent class is also known as main classes. So the another name that we give to independent class is main class or complete sentences. They can stand alone and express a complete thought. Yes, independent class can stand alone. It can express a complete thought just like a sentence, but it is not a full sentence. It is only a part of a sentence. A set of a sentence is called as an independent class. Here I've given few examples. I need a book. I need a book. Mary prefers coffee. 
Ram is a good volleyball player. So, in all these sentences, they have a subject, they have a verb, and they convey a complete meaning, so they can stand alone. So, these are the examples of independent classes. Then, what is dependent class? The literal meaning of the word dependent itself conveys that it has to rely upon another sentence. It has to rely upon another sentence. Then it is called as dependent classes. The other name we give to the dependent class is subordinate class. So I have given the definition here. Dependent classes, also known as subordinate classes, contain a subject and a predicate but they do not express a complete thought. Here, clearly it is given what is the difference between the independent class and the dependent class. Here, the dependent class, they do not express a complete thought, whereas the independent class conveys and express a complete thought. But dependent class doesn't do that. Example, when it is raining, when it is raining, here, when it is raining, here we have a subject, it, verb, is raining. So, subject plus verb, it fulfills the condition, the rule of a class. Whereas, regarding meaning, it has to rely upon another sentence. Hence, it is an example for dependent class, when it is raining. The second one, because you were late. Here, you subject, where, late, verb, but it has to rely upon yet another sentence to give a complete meaning. Hence, it is an example of dependent class. The third one, after you go to school, after you go to school, you subject, go, verb. So, it fulfills the rule of a class, but at the same time, the sentence cannot convey a complete meaning. It has to rely upon another one. Hence, it is an example of independent classes. So, all these three are examples of independent, sorry, dependent classes. Yes. Dependent classes further can be divided into three. In the same way, independent classes also can be divided into three. Here, I have given the three types of dependent class. Adjective class, adverb class, noun class. So, these are the three types of dependent classes. Okay. Adjective class, first one. Before getting into this, I would like to ask you a few questions. My dear students, what is an adjective? Yes, you are right. It is on among the parts of speech. It gives the more information about a noun. Yes. So, definition of adjective class. An adjective class describes or gives more information about a noun. So, this is the definition of an adjective class. An adjective class describes or gives more information about a noun. Tells us which one, what kind or how many. I have given one example here. The book that I left on the bus belongs to Mr. Baskar, belongs to Mr. Baskar. So, you keep this in mind and again read the definition. An adjective class describes or gives more information about a noun. Here, the book that I left on the bus belongs to Mr. Baskar. The book is the noun here. So, the book that belongs to Mr. Baskar. So, this is the relationship between the book and Mr. Baskar. So, this is an adjective class. Next, adverb class. Yes, an adverb class describes or gives more information about a verb. It tells us when, where, how, to what extent or under what condition something happening. So, adverb it gives information about the verb. Yes. The adverb class describes or gives more information about a verb. Example. She was happy because her father gave her a watch. 
Here, she was happy. Was happy. Was be form of verb. Happy main verb. Yes. Here, happy is the verb. Okay. Happy. Then, her father gave her a watch. Why she is happy? Because her father gave her a watch. So, the happy the verb. The adverb class describes more information about a verb. Yes, happy is described here as her father gave her a watch. Her father gave her a watch. So she was very happy. In such a way, adverb describes or gives more information about a verb. So happy related to her father gave her a watch. The third one, noun class. A noun class takes the place of the noun in the sentence. Example, this is the best rule that I know. This is the best rule that I know. Here, noun. This is the best route. This is the best route that I know. So, again, we keep this in mind. A noun class takes the place of the noun in the sentence. So, this is the best route is the noun class and it takes the place of a noun. So, this is an example of noun class. This is the best route that I know. Likewise, the class is divided into two independent and dependent class. We have gone through independent class and then dependent class and the dependent class further divided into two, three adjective class, adverb class and the noun class. Yes, I hope my dear students, you would have understood the distinction between the independent class and the main class. Yes, and now we'll move on to the next topic, phrases. Okay, what is the difference between a phrase and a class? As we all know that a class is a sentence that consists of a subject and a predicate and a verb and it gives a complete meaning but at the same time it is a part of a sentence only it is a set of sentence only whereas phrase is not like so it is a meaningful unit but it not it don't give a complete meaning or a complete it is not a complete sentence yes phrase a phrase is a group of words that forms a meaningful unit but it is not a complete sentence in other words, it does not have a subject or a verb. Here, we understand very clearly that just like, just like a class, a phrase does not have a subject or a verb. It is only a meaningful unit. It is not a complete sentence. Example, the red umbrella was blown away in the wind. The red umbrella was blown away in the wind. The red umbrella is a phrase. The red umbrella is a phrase, example of a phrase. Further, the phrase can be divided into noun phrase, verb phrase, prepositional phrase. Yes, now we see what is a noun phrase. A noun phrase is a group of words made up of a noun and its modifiers. Example, the pink house is for sale. The house is the noun, whereas the word pink, the modifier, expresses something more. The house is in pink color, the pink house, the pink house. It is an example of noun phrase. Next, verb phrase. A verb phrase is a group of words made up of a verb, helping verbs and modifiers. Yes, of course. Example. You have woken up everyone in the house. Here, have woken up. Woken up. Have woken up. Is an phrase. Is an verb phrase. Because here we have three verbs. Have woken. Two verbs. Have woken up with a preposition. So all these three words comes together as a verb phrase. So, you have woken up everyone in the house. Have woken up is an example of verb phrase. Then, prepositional phrases. 
A prepositional phrase is a group of words that begin with a preposition and help to explain the relationship between two things. As we all know that preposition that conveys the relationship between the subject and the object. More than one or two preposition is called as prepositional phrase. And the definition, a prepositional phrase is a group of words that begin with a preposition and help to explain the relationship between two things. Hence, a prepositional phrase starts with a preposition and combines with more than one or two words, then it is called as prepositional phrases. Example, the present inside the big box is mine. Inside is the preposition and next to that, again I repeat the definition of prepositional phrase. A prepositional phrase is a group of words that begin with the preposition and help to explain the relationship between two things. Example, the present inside the big box is mine. Here, inside is a preposition and it's followed by the big box. Hence, it is a prepositional phrase. Then, how does it work? It conveys the relationship between the present and mine. That is, the gift inside the box is mine. Till now, we have seen what is the phrase and what is the class. Know to differentiate what is a phrase and what is a class. There are so many exercises given in the textbook. Go through it and try to answer it correctly. Then we'll move on to the next topic, connectors. Yes, connectors. The word itself explains something is connected. Connection, connectors. A connector may be used to indicate the relationship between the ideas expressed in a class or a sentence. So, in a sentence, there will be more than one idea. So, the ideas are connected by some words that have a specific work. And those words are called as connectors. So, the ideas that are expressed in the class or in a sentence or connected together by using a special word and that word is called as connectors. There are few examples. Adding, sequencing, illustrating, cause and effect. So these are some of the examples of connectors. Adding connectors, sequencing connectors, cause and effect connectors. Then comparing connectors, qualifying connectors, contrasting connectors, emphasizing connectors. Yes, first we'll take adding. Adding, as we all know that, one plus one. One idea with another idea. We can use and also as well as, moreover, to, furthermore, additionally. These words are used to add two ideas. And also, as well as, moreover, to, further, additionally. Whereas, sequencing. Sequencing is an order. First one, second one, third one. So, sequencing. First, second, third, finally, next, meanwhile, after, then, subsequently. These are the sequencing words which helps to connect the ideas that relate sequencing. Third one, illustrating. Illustrating, giving example. For example, such as, for instance, in the case of, as revealed by, illustrated by. These are the words that connects the ideas relating, illustrating. Then cause and effect. Because, so, therefore, thus, consequently, hence. The sentence, those have the idea of cause and effect are combined together 
are connected together using the connectors because so therefore thus subsequently hence it is followed by comparing qualifying contrasting emphasizing these are also the connectors comparing comparing one to one or comparing one with more ideas when it is used for comparing the connectors similarly likewise as with like equally in the same way these are the comparing connectors used in a sentence to compare qualifying but however although unless except apart from as long as if these are the qualifying words these are the qualifying connectors we use in the class or the sentence to combine the ideas contrasting what is contrast two different thing or contrasted they are whereas instead of alternatively otherwise unlike on the other hand con conversely so these are the example of contrasting connectors we make use of it in the class and sentences when we want to contrast few things the last one is emphasizing we give more importance to all above all in particular especially significantly indeed notably these are the emphasizing connectors when we want to emphasize an idea or when we want to emphasize a particular thing we make use of all these emphasizing connectors above all in particular especially significantly indeed notably so we have to keep all these connectors in mind to combine or connect the ideas in a class or a sentence we have to keep the head topic adding sequencing illustrating cause and effect comparing qualifying contrasting emphasizing here i have given some examples we could go to the library or the park we could, we could go to the library or the park here r is the connector so whether we have to go to library or to park we have to come to one conclusion for that we make use of the particular connector or next one neither he neither finished his homework nor studied for the test neither nor conjunctions neither nor he neither finished his homework nor studied for the test he hasn't done the work homework and the test he hasn't done the two thing homework test so in that case we make use of the connectors neither nor the third example i did not go to dash the weather was hot hence the weather is hot he is not going out so in that case i have to combine the two ideas so i make use of the connector because i did not go out because the weather was hot and that is the reason why he is not going out the fourth one the man has much money he is not happy at all the man has much money he has enough amount of money but at the same time he is not happy so I have to com combine the two ideas in this sentence so i make use of a particular connector however the man has much money however he is not happy at all the fifth one i like playing football on the other hand my brother likes playing basketball i make use of a particular connector on the other hand in the ideas expressed here the contrasting ideas because i like playing football whereas my brother likes playing basketball so in contrasting this i make use of the connector on the other hand so my dear students we have done this connectors and in your uh, textbook and in your textbook a detailed version is given there with lump sum amount of examples go through that and now we'll move on to the next topic determiners 
what is the determiner? Determiners are the words that introduce a noun and provide some information about it, but do not describe it. Determiners are the words that introduce a noun. It introduces noun, but it not describes the noun. Determiners are followed by a noun. I have given the example, the ball, five cats, his son, some students. In all this, the, five, his, some, they are the examples of in determiners. They introduce the noun, the ball, five cats, his son, some students. So the work of a determiner is to introduce the noun and he does not describe the noun. There are a few examples for the determiners. And what are all the things that comes as the determiners? Articles, demonstrative, possessive adjectives, quantifiers, cardinal numbers, ordinal numbers. All these work as determiners. Articles, we all know that we have three articles, a and the. Demonstratives, this, that, these, those. Possessive adjectives, my, our, your, his, her, its, their. Quantifiers, some, any, few, little, more, much, many, every. Cardinal numbers, one, two, three, twenty, forty, hundred, etc. Ordinal numbers, first, second, third, twentieth, etc. All these are examples of determiners. Articles, demonstrators, possessive adjectives, quantifiers, ordinal numbers. And I have given few examples here. An apple is a healthy fruit. So an apple, an, a determiner that introduces the noun apple. The second one, two cats have drunken a bowl of milk. How, two cats, cats, noun is introduced by the determiner, two cats. My father has many cars, my possessive, many, number. My father has many cars. Here my and many are determiners. They introduce the noun, father, cars. Likewise, determiners plays a vital role in a sentence. So my dear students, today we have learned phrase and class and connectors and determiners, which are a minor areas in the grammar, but at the same time, it has its own. Okay, my dear students, again, we'll go through the thing that we have taken